Good morning and it's Sunday again and it's awesome to have you with us in our home and uh, live streaming our service this morning. First of all, most important, I want to say happy Father's Day to all the awesome dads out there. Uh, I pray that today you are super blessed and uh, not only in stuff but in seeing how much you are loved by your children and your family and uh, thank you for all the effort for all the work all the care all the love all the the provision all the shouts and all the discipline all of that too uh, thank you for being good dads and for really raising up some awesome kids and uh, i just pray that god bless you and uh, just protect you and help you to continue to do the work that he has has given you to do so Happy Father's Day from all of us here, and yeah, we hope you have a super awesome day. Today we're going to just uh, carry on a little bit on our love um, spree <laughs> that we've been talking about. And a few weeks ago I spoke about loving God, and last week I spoke about loving yourself. And so today, obviously, the, the last part is to love your neighbor. So we're going to go into that in a little bit, but uh, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome, awesome to have you here. Please feel free to say amen in the comments or to give it a thumbs up, we really appreciate that. And then also subscribe to our channel, this is not the last, we, we've got lots of plans for our YouTube channel and we want you to make sure that you don't miss out, so make sure that that notification bell is uh, lit up for you to get all the notifications um, yeah so let's get into it let's close our eyes and just pray Heavenly Father we thank you for another day we thank you that we can get together just still connected even in this time of of uh, isolation and quarantine and separation and social distancing Lord we know that it is by your blood that we all are together that we are one family and so, Father, I just pray right now as we dig into your word that we will open up our hearts, have the soil ready, Father, for the seeds that you want to plant. And, Lord, I pray that, that we will be challenged, but, Lord, that we will be changed to be more and more like you in everything that we say, everything that we do. And, Lord, that we will walk and talk the way that you have, have instructed us to. And, Lord, I just pray thank you that you are here and i give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in jesus name amen so if you want to turn in your bible so long to 1 corinthians uh if you're not uh familiar with this scripture verse it is the love scripture verse 1 corinthians 13 so we're going to go there but i just want to read mark 12 for you so long while while you're getting ready Mark 12 verse 28 says, One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus replied, The most important commandment is this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 13 and we're going to read the chapter about love. And I want you to, to think it over. How, how is this love passage applicable to you in your life right now and yes we're talking about our neighbor and obviously when we think neighbor we literally think the guy next door but it could be your husband or your wife or your children or your co-workers or maybe even your parents it, it's somebody outside of obviously you and God so how are we loving on other people so let's dig into 1 Corinthians 13 we're going to read from verse 1. It says, If I could speak in any language in heaven or on earth, but didn't love others, 
I would only be making meaningless noise like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I knew all the mysteries of the future and knew everything about everything, but didn't love others, what good would I be? And if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, without love, I would be no good to anybody. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would be of no value whatsoever. In John 15 verse 12 to 13, it says, I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. It's easy to love the people we like. But we really get challenged when we have to love those that that get to us, that that make us want to scream and, and shout and yeah, you know, and most times it's the ones you're married to. But you know, this is this is how God um really challenges us to be more like him. I mean, if if Jesus could lay down his life for for all those people that were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Can you not find it in your heart to love that one person who, who really just niggles at you all the time? This is the kind of love that Jesus has called us to. To love each other as he loved us. If we read to the end of that, that scripture of John, in verse 17 it says, I command you to love each other. God, Jesus isn't just suggesting that it's a good idea to love someone. He's commanding us that we need to love them. You know, in the 30 places in the New Testament that we are commanded to love each other or to love one another, there are three common themes, and that's where we want to go into a little bit today. The first one is love builds bridges. Now there's a, a Nigerian proverb that goes, the wise build bridges, or in the moment of crisis, the wise build bridges and the foolish build dams. When we are wise, we reach out. When we are going through a tough time, we need to reach out. We need to build bridges. We need to... to uh, stretch out to those who are around us not for selfish reasons but to build bridges to connect with each other instead of building dams where we try and keep in you know this is mine or i'm going to get what i can can what i get and then sit on the can we need to make sure that we're not damming up what god is trying to use to reach out to other people. People around us need to be encouraged. And a lot of the time when we're going through tough times, there are other people out there in the world who are going through the same thing. And they just need someone who they can connect with and know that they're not alone. And you could be that person f for someone to give them courage, to give them hope, to, and maybe in, in a way, they doing the same for you. People are hurting out there. And we need to be the light on the hill and the salt of the earth. And, and knowing that as much as God loves us, we can love them. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 says, Encourage and build each other up. Bridges are built when love is spoken. We need to speak out in love. You know, I'm sure you've heard, you know, somebody's got something they, they need to tell you and it, it, it's not a great, uh, it's not a nice thing they want to say, but they, they start off the sentence with, I just want to tell you something in love. And you know, here it comes. You're already offended. But you know what? That's not how love works. 
in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is patient and kind. When we speak to others, we need to be speaking kindly. We need to have patience with people. We're all on our own journey and, and some of us are slower than others. But we need to be patient with them and know that God is working in them as much as he's working in us. It also tells us that love is not jealous or boastful or proud. And sometimes we can get very uh, boastful about our journey. And instead of it becoming a testimony, it becomes a review. And, and it's not what God wants. God wants us to live the testimony that he is, is creating in our hearts. The thing is, Nobody is a mind reader. When we are married or in a very close relationship, we expect our spouse to just know what we're thinking, know what we're feeling. And that isn't loving someone because they can't read our minds. We need to speak to them. There needs to be communication. And love is built on communication. We need to tell each other not only the bad things, but the good things too, because those are the things that encourage us as we walk through our lives. Bridges are also built when we show love to other people. Galatians 5.13 says that we need to serve one another. And Ephesians 4.32 says that we need to be kind and compassionate to one another. In verse 5, of 1 Corinthians 13 it says love is not rude sure that's a tough one I think a lot of us if if we have to put instead of love is Lindine is Lindine is not rude can I say that well I try my hardest that that I work towards that and listen we all we all miss the mark we all uh have our moments but love doesn't remind you of those things love is patient and kind bridges are also built when love is sincere people know when you're just putting it on and uh, 1 Peter 4 verse 8 tells us that we need to continue to show deep love for each other for love covers a multitude of sin I don't know about you but sometimes sometimes it's hard to look past the sin to look past you know the the things that are going on and especially when we don't agree to say you know hate the sin but not the sinner and and for us being sinners it's hard to see past the action but Jesus saw into our hearts and he's commanded us to love each other like he is love he loves us and so we have to make it a point to see past the sin and see the heart of the person there in 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 12 it says and may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. People can really see past the insincerity of love. And sadly, when people look at the church and, and people in the church and people who call themselves Christians, as much as they don't want us to, to, to admit to it, they truly hold us up to a different standard to those in the world. And my heart aches when I realize that as Christians, we miss it. And not once or twice, but a lot. And we need to, to be honest about ourselves, but also be ready to apologize. Jesus says that the only way to live a truly good life is to stay close to him. To remain in him. 
He is the vine and we are the branches. And there is nothing that we can do that will bear fruit if we are not in him. Apart from Christ, our efforts are useless. God loves to make the best relationships possible. But it's that first connection. That first connection between you and God. Loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. If we keep reading 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5, it says, Love does not demand its own way. Yo, I know for me that's sometimes a tough one because we want things to be done the way we think is right. And we do get irritable and we do get um, nitpicky and, and pick on people and, and, it's, and it's wrong because that is not showing love. The next part of building these bridges, of, of building this connection of love, is that love bears burdens. We need to carry each other. We need to pray for each other. I want to read James 5 and verse 16. It says, confess your sins to each other. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Notice there, it didn't say the prayers of a perfect person because then none of our prayers would ever get answered. But the prayers of a righteous person. What is righteousness? It's living in right standing with Christ, living God's way. And how do you know what God's way is? You have that relationship, that connection, loving him with all you are. And so in love, he can direct your path. So we, I have this picture. And I want you just to have a look at it for a second. If we unite, nobody falls. If we are praying for each other, if we are lifting each other up, we've got it. God is that, that um, pole <laughs> in the middle that keeps us all going. When we hit that, that gap in the road, when we, when we get to that hole and we can't make it through, we hold on to Christ and we get lifted up and we, we get moved forward with those that are around us. If we are ready to follow this instruction, we don't allow ourselves to get away with destructive behavior. We don't suffer alone. And so when we are alone, and some of us I'm sure feel that way at the moment, misery loves company. But I want to tell you something. Jesus uses company to encourage you. Don't go looking for people who are going to allow you to stay in your pit. Allow God to set you up with people and with friends and with family and with church members that will encourage you, that will pray for you, that will stand by you, that will tell you, keep going, you've got this. That is showing love. That is building a bridge. And then the, first one, or the third one is that Love breaks barriers. Yes, there are some barriers that, that we have that are there to keep us safe. We have laws in our land and uh, those laws help us to live a productive life. There are also laws and things that God has set in place. And we need to understand that those boundaries are there to keep us safe and to keep us together but there are barriers that we make of ourselves that separate us from from other people and from being uh, a love light to to the world
we have this thing as humans to throw stones at each other to throw um, things that we've done wrong or uh, moments that we've missed opportunities that have come and gone times that we've been wrong people love to to throw that back in our face those rocks that they send that they throw at us we need to choose what we are going to do with them are we going to gather them up and build a wall that's going to separate us or are we going to take those rocks and build the bridge build the bridge to say you know what yes i made mistakes yes i've come short but Jesus still loves me. And even in my shortcomings, I can still be a, a useful part of the kingdom. Mark 9 verse 50 says, be at peace with each other. In Colossians 3.13, it tells us, bear with each other and forgive. We need to forgive not only ourselves, but those around us because unforgiveness stops us from loving stops us from doing that one command that, that Jesus gave us in James 5 verse 9 it tells us not to grumble against each other oh the times that you have to listen to people say terrible things about other people behind their back don't you wonder then what do they say about you behind yours this is not the love that Jesus wants us to show. This is not the kind of love that Jesus gives to us. We need to make sure that we are not being selfish, that we are not um, walking in unforgiveness, that we don't gossip and slander and put other people down, that we are patient impatience in the life that we live at the moment everything is so fast we want stuff done now we we want um deadlines met yesterday that we only got today and and these are things that are going to get in the way of us being a light to the world loving on each other and building those bridges what about those judgmental attitudes where we have to check ourselves not everything we've learned through our lives is right but the bible tells us that god can use anything and turn it to good for those who love him ah there's that word again love love him connect with him and through him you will be able to love everyone else So let's just go back to 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 4, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable and it keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It is never glad about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out love never gives up love never loses faith it all it's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance love will last forever there's a saying that says people will forget what you said but they won't forget the way you made them feel how are you speaking how are you acting how are you loving on others in john 15 and verse 8 it says my true disciples produce much fruit and this brings joy to my father in heaven I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I have told you this 
so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Remaining in the love that Jesus has has given to us gives us a sense of joy. A joy so great it overflows, it bubbles over and, and will connect with all those people around you. I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. And here is how to measure it. So after all the commands and after all the information, Jesus is saying, here's a way for you to measure how you love. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. Well, so I'm sure that when I, I read that now, you, you saw uh, actually giving up your life, you know, dying, standing in the gap, you know, being in the way when, when, when the bullet goes off or, or whatever the case is. But you know what? Sometimes laying down your life could be as simple as laying down your plans. The things you have prepared for, the things that you have set out to do. Making that time to go and have coffee with someone who's, who's called you and said, I, I need to talk. You know, that is laying down your life because your stuff goes on hold while you're going to see them. And that one little moment could definitely change someone's life. It can change how they see the world. It can change how they think people think about them. It's not just about dying. It's about living. And Jesus said, I have come to give life and life in abundance. He wants us to find this joy. He wants us to find this connection. And it starts with the relationship with him, but it ends with us portraying him more and more and more. In verse 14 it says, You are my friends if you obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. That's another a translation. If you love me, you'll obey me. Do you love Jesus? Can you say that you love him? And will your life reflect that? Verse 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. I command you to love each other this world is filled with hurting people who need a friend. There's a world out there who need Jesus, who need his love, who need his, his peace, who needs his grace. And you might be the only Jesus that person sees. Let's reflect the real Christ in the way that we speak, in the way that we, we love not just in words, but in action, in real life. It all starts with a relationship with Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you're going to try and love on everybody and you're going to run out of patience. You're going to run out of uh, understanding you're going to run out of just anything because you're doing it all on your own strength and trying to give out of an empty cup never produces much but Jesus is saying come to me come and see who I see let me show you how I love so that you can go out and love others to build those bridges to be the one that is there for somebody when, when they're hurting or when they're lost. And you know what? God is this good that when you are hurting and you are lost, 
he will bring someone along your path as well. And so I want to encourage you as as you go through life, as you should, as you do the things that God has put on your heart to do, I pray that you would do it in love and that you would allow him to show you his love while you do it. I'd just like you to take a minute, just close your eyes and and just think about can you put your name in this scripture verse where, the, where love is, can you say that I am patient and kind? I'm not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. To go through that scripture verse and, and measure up that love. Measure up and see. If we read in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9, it says, Now we know only a little, and even the gift of prophecy reveals little. But when the end comes, these special gifts will all disappear. It's like this. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child does. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly as in a poor mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely just as God knows me now. And verse 13 tells us, there are three things that will endure, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will just come right now and touch our hearts and and our minds. Jesus, show us specifically what we can do to enhance the friendships that we have. For the benefit of those we call friends, and to bring glory to God. Lord, show us how to be more like you in our relationships and in in our friendships that you bring. Lead us to be sincere in our love, kindness and compassion for others. Father, forgive us for our bad attitudes, for the grudges and the unforgiveness that we hold. And for the things that we think we are entitled to hold on to. Forgive our gossip and slander and the the words of death that we speak over others and the relationships. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will will come and release us from, from these bad attitudes. From the unforgiveness, from the bitterness and the hurt. And anything else that will separate us from you, Lord. Jesus, please replace these things with kindness, compassion, forgiveness and love. And show us the way to be the friend that you commanded us to be in your word. And I thank you for that today. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much again for joining us. I pray that you would have an awesome week ahead. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click that notification bell and give us a a, a thumbs up as well. If you want to connect with us on any of our social media platforms, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at BC Church SA. And feel free to send us messages. If you have any prayer requests, you can get us there. And if you'd like to give towards the ministry, our banking details will be in the description box below. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you and bring you peace. All God, goodbye.